Today I am going to tell you about the rising threat to America. This threat is not from our enemies, from Iran or Pakistan, or even China, Korea, or Russia, but from right here inside of America, the enemy is your Congress and representatives, and even your own president. President Obama ordered the murder of American citizen Anwar Al-Awlaki without a trial, although Anwar Al-Awlaki was without doubt guilty of treason, he was not given the chance to surrender or to stand trail by a jury of his peers. This is unacceptable. Force has law-abiding citizens that must follow the laws of our nation, the same laws and freedoms that were created to help this nation stay free and strong. Obama and Congress also are trying to pass the Internet Black out bill which will be the first law of its kind in our nation much like China and other tyrant ran countries have Google stopped filtering China's internet searches because they have true Americans knew that it was morally wrong they even now are protesting this bill also the American government regularly collects your internet data such as your search history and even your Twitter and Facebook accounts also Obama tried to pass a bill giving the CIA and Department of Justice the Department of Homeland Security and FBI the right to lie to you if you request a freedom of information request that they do not want to give you. The Freedom of Information Act was created to help try and keep the government honest and open. Obama promised to be the most open president to date, but so far has been one of the most secretive and hardest on whistleblowers. Rather, it was for his birth certificate or Osama bin Laden's death pictures, but his biggest crime to date is the defense authorization bill the U.S. Senate is considering the unthinkable, changing detention laws to imprison people including Americans living in the United States itself indefinitely and without charge. The defense authorization bill must pass piece of legislation is headed to the Senate floor with troubling provisions that would give the president and all future presidents the authority to indefinitely imprison people without charge or trial, both abroad and inside the United States. If enacted, sections 1031 and 1032 of the NDAA would, one, explicitly authorize the federal government to indefinitely imprison without charge or trial American citizens and others, picked up inside and outside the United States. To mandate military detention of some civilians who would otherwise be outside of military control, including civilians picked up within the United States itself, and three transfer to the Department of Defense Corps Resecutorial Investigative Law Enforcement penal and custodial authority and responsibility now held by the Department of Justice. The bill was drafted in secret by Sands, Carl Levin, D. Mitch, and John McCain, R. Riz, and passed in a closed-door committee meeting without even a single hearing. The American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, is the nation's oldest organization of its kind, emerging from the American Union Against Militarism, which opposed the U.S. entry into World War I in 1917. Without endorsing everything the ACLU has done, it is possible to recognize
recognize this organization as careful. It is not prone to wild exaggeration. Fortunately, there is some resistance to the NDAA for 2012 bill to this Department of Defense power grab, including Bison. Diane Feinstein, D. Calif, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, and Sin. Patrick Leahy, DVT, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. In fact, Sin. Feinstein appeared quite alarmed. I will stop reading here, but again, I want to emphasize this point. We are talking about the indefinite detention of American citizens without charge or trial. We have not done this at least since World War II when we incarcerated Japanese Americans. This is a very serious thing we are doing. People should understand its impact. The White House is not enthusiastic about the present wording of the two controversial sections of the bill. In a statement of administration policy, November 17, 2011, the administration objected to two main items. One, that the bill mandates the military detention of covered persons, restraining the Justice Department's hand. And two, that the detention provisions can cover American citizens within the United States. Obviously, if the president is put in the position of having to sign a bill with such a provision indefinite detention for Americans, it would spark bottomless outrage from from both Occupy Wall Street and the Tea Party. Even mainstream, apolitical Americans would be concerned about such a provision that, on its face, is unconstitutional. Ordinary Americans are already waking up to the specter of tyranny and the NDAA for 2012 would accelerate that process. So the administration released this statement in an effort to trim the most offensive sections from the bill. Moreover, applying this military custody requirement to individuals inside the United States, as some members of Congress have suggested is their intention, would raise serious and unsettled legal questions and would be inconsistent with the fundamental American principle that our military does not patrol our streets. Senator Levin's response to the administration is troubling on two counts. First, Sen. Levin's response suggests that the administration changed its position midway through this process or Possibly that there is a split between the White House on the one hand and the Pentagon or CIA on the other. Sin. Levin states that it was the administration all along that assisted with the wording. Section 1031 was written by administration officials for the purpose of codifying existing authority. Then Sin. Levin complains that the administration itself asked that we delete language in Section 1031 that would have excluded the detention of U.S. citizens or lawful resident aliens based on conduct taking place within the United States. Senator Levin insists that there is nothing in those sections that breaks with established law and that the committee accepted the administration's proposed changes to retain the civilian rather than the military option for detainment. This is how Sen. Levin 
tried to put at ease the concerns, nothing is automatic. The administration would have the discretion to waive military detention and hold the detainee in civilian custody if it decided to do so. Sin. Levin then proceeds to misinterpret the Supreme Court case that he himself cited, Handy v. Rumsfeld, 2004, as Sin. Levin claims the Supreme Court held in the handy case that existing law authorizes the detention of American citizens under the law of war in the limited circumstances spelled out here, so this is nothing new. But the circumstances in sin Levin's bill are not limited at all since they involve indefinite detention without trial. Besides, the Supreme Court actually decided in the handy case in fact that detainees who are U.S. citizens must have the ability to challenge their enemy combatant status before an impartial judge. This precludes indefinite detention without a trial. Handy v. Rumsfeld had addressed the case of Yazerism Handy, a U.S. citizen, being detained indefinitely as an illegal enemy combatant. As Justice Sandra Day O'Connor wrote, in the opinion, it would turn our system of checks and balances on its head to suggest that the citizen could not make his way to court with a challenge to the factual basis for his detention by his government simply because the executive opposes making available such a challenge. Absent suspension of the writ by Congress, a citizen, detained as an enemy combatant, is entitled to this process. Eight of the nine justices of the court agreed that the government does not have the power to hold indefinitely a U.S. citizen without basic due process protections enforceable through judicial review. Clearly, this upcoming defense bill, especially sections 1031 and 1032, is plagued by confusion. Some of this confusion appears to be deliberate.